Good morning, everyone. It's Nancy Narden, the founder of Smart Selling Tools, calling in from Sacramento as uh, as usual. Last week I was at a very busy event, which uh, many of you may have been at as well. That was Dreamforce was taking place last week at uh, in San Francisco, and it was a really great show. Next week we'll be at the Corporate Executive Board, which you may know as CEB. They're having their sales and marketing summit in Vegas. So if anyone listening is going to be in Vegas next week, uh, drop me a note and let's uh, plan to get together and meet in person. It's nice to do uh, when so often it's just virtual through social networks and such. So let me start by just saying that we hold several of these types of webinars um, a month, sometimes even every week. So if you register just for today's call, go ahead and drop back onto our site, check out the events page, and subscribe to the entire series. And that way you'll automatically be registered and you'll get login details each week for each webinar. So today's guests, as you can see here, are Mark Arman, and he is the former VP of Business Development at Shortel, and then Dave Stachura, and he's the VP of Customer Success at Alinea, a company I know well. So it's a pleasure to have you both on the call today, and I, I can't wait to jump in, but I think first let me just set the stage uh, with... As I mentioned, I, I do know Alinean well. We've named Alinean a top sales tool of the year for several years in a row, and I've done videos which describe what they do in my weekly recommended tool of the week series. So needless to say, I'm pretty familiar with it, and I believe in what it has to offer. So I'm going to take a swing here at describing it to you before we get started. All right, ready? Here it is in a nutshell. Alinean helps salespeople and marketers communicate value. Okay, that sounds pretty simple, but there's a lot more to it. So, what first of all, I don't mean it helps them talk about value. It helps them communicate value, which means that the message actually resonates with prospects. They get it. They believe in it. You know, it makes sense to them. They have an emotional response to it. That's what communication means. We can talk all we want about our solution and why we think it makes sense for them, but often that approach fails, which is why opportunities materialize too slowly, why leads don't get converted, why deals stall. And indeed, you you may be familiar with ser serious decisions. They've done research that consistently shows the number one reason for revenue shortfall is the inability to communicate value. So again, getting back to that in a nutshell, it helps salespeople and marketers communicate value. That really is a critical or a, you know in, important, and it's not easy to do, and it's not being done very well today. So that's what this webinar is all about. How can you do a more effective job communicating value and thereby drive a whole lot more web, uh, revenue? So the first half of the webinar, Mark and I will be talking about his experience before and after Alinean and kind of what brought him to decide that he had a problem that needed fixing and why he chose to go that route. So you're going to be looking at this screen for the first 20 minutes. Don't feel like, oh, I'm, you know, Nancy's forgetting to flip through the slides. There are no slides. We're just going to have a conversation. And then about 20 minutes after, uh, Dave will jump on and he's going to take us through and show us some examples so you can really you know, see what it looks like. Okay, so Mark, Dave, with that, um, let me formally welcome you. It's a pleasure to have right. you with us today. Thank you so much, Nancy. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Great. Okay. Well, Excellent. so Mark, there's so much that we can talk about, and right. I let's start at the very beginning. First of all. Sure. Uh, you know, I know that your title is former VP of Business Development at Shortel. So right. you were with Shortel. Yes. You're now with That's Starleaf. Um, that is correct. So you used Alinean at Shortel. Tell us why you're talking about the Shortel experience and what you're doing now at Starleaf, if that's a fair question. Sure, absolutely. Thank, thanks, Nancy. I appreciate the opportunity. And I, uh, just uh, ahead of time, apologize. There might be a little bit of noise here, but uh, I'll do my best to, uh, to brown it out. Um, so, yeah, going back to, uh, in fact, it was sort of 2007, 
Um, I joined Short Sellers you know, Leading Business Development in 2006. Uh, we took the company public, and as a as a brand, we knew we had a you know phenomenal product that was highly reliable. This was the you know the UC platform or voice voice over IP platform. But we were a challenger brand. We knew that we had a profoundly uh, you know a profound uh, advantage in terms of total cost of ownership and the economic advantages that were driving into our customers. But we couldn't really, we weren't good at communicating it and we certainly weren't good at, uh, at, uh, at proving it. And so this was, you know, a lot of the imperative was not just the communication but the proof points around the total cost of ownership advantage. In our case at Shortel, like I said, we had, we had a platform, we had many customers coming to us who had already decided to move over to voice over IP. So the, the, the imperatives around ROI, ROI tools weren't so strong but it was really, they'd made a choice on voice over IP but they were comparing various alternatives. Shortel was the challenger brand and they knew that they liked Shortel but they needed to be able to go to their board and their other decision makers and prove it. And so the imperative around a TCO tool became you know, very, very important. We started thinking about this in 2007. It was during the, the global financial crisis as everyone remembers. Many IT industries just, you know, the, the, you know, the floor dropped out of those. In the, in the case of the UC industry, it shrank by 20 or 30 percent. Uh, and so what also happened at this time is, you know, prior to the, the, the global financial crisis, a lot of IT decisions have been made using, uh, you know, bottom, you know, requiring bottom line, you know, quantifiable, uh, you know, proof, you know, P&L type proof or financial business cases. What we found after the global financial crisis is almost 90 percent of big IT decisions were requiring some type of, you know, uh, quantifiable, you know, bottom line proof. And so we had this going on in the background. We knew we had a really strong advantage. Uh, but we didn't have sort of a single platform or a single methodology for proving that. So we started to develop that and we started working with Alinium. Over a course of three or four years, we developed a cloud-based platform, a TCO platform with Alinium, and it had a couple of principles um, to it. We knew that uh, you know, uh, these were large purchase decisions for customers, $100,000 to a million dollars in, in CapEx in some cases, and we knew that those decision makers were really putting their careers on the line often with those decisions. So they needed to be able to stand up in front of their peers and say, look, you know, Shortel is the best solution and here's why. And so in, in giving them that confidence, we needed to be able to have a TCO tool that was absolutely configurable to each customer's, you know, exact, uh, you know, telephony needs, their exact circumstances, the number of employees, the number of sites, where they were located around the world. Uh, the second thing we needed to do was to be able to um, base that tool, uh, you know, as best we could, uh, you know, on independent third-party data. And, uh, and the third thing we need to do is create a, a platform or a tool where it was, um, you know, all of the assumptions were completely, you know, able to be inspected by, by the customer, able to be modified, uh, to be updated or, uh, you know, or zeroed out in some cases. And what we ended up with Alinean was a cloud-based tool that, you know, developed build of materials for Shortel and all of its competitors are built out a very discrete, very accurate, you know, seven or ten year forecast on all of their cost components and enabled the, the end user to go in and, and get, you know, very, you know, in either a few minutes or over a few hours, depending on the level of detail they required, to build out a very, very accurate total cost of ownership picture for Shortel and all of its competitors. And I'll just say, you know, the end result of this, as it was developed and in, improved and improved with the help of the Alinean team, at the, the end of this is we had multiple examples of short tail closing business at half a million dollars over, say, a Cisco uh, equivalent quote. We had many examples of sales cycles being compressed from as much as six months down to weeks in some cases. And um, we had um, you know, many, many examples of sort of, you know, where margin uh, had been protected in the deals or even increased. And at a macro level for short tail, over about a seven year period, short tail was the only vendor in the industry that was able to hold or increase its average uh, average sales price or ASPs for telephony in general. This was in, in the mm -hmm. background. All of the other competitors over that period saw a halving of ASP. So it was a, had a profound impact strategically on the business. The partnership with Alinean, the 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 the, uh, the robustness of the tools. These were tools that were built for you know, every currency in the world, every geography in the world. Um, they were you know tools that were you know had thousands of reports being downloaded. Uh, per quarter by the you know but at the back end of that period, so it was just profound impact on the on the win rate and the success and the overall revenue growth of the company. So I'll pause there if I could. 
And how long did it take for you to ramp this entire program up? I mean, it seems like there would be some training that would be required to really bring salespeople right. up speed and make sure that they were competent at yes. walking and competent and confident, confident to use these tools with their customers. Yeah, I, no, that's a great question. I think the important thing is there was value in this for Shortel and the channel partners and the customers on day one. So we, we, we built a, an early version, then we just continued to listen and work with the partners and train. Uh, you know, I personally trained over you know, 400 partner sales reps, but I know our you know, the sales team at the time uh, trained thousands. And by the end, we, I think we had over 3,000 of the partner sales reps certified on the tool. Um, we, you know, using the learning management system to, to certify. The company even uh, delivered or, or uh, issued a, a TCO guarantee uh, to all of its prospective customers, uh, which said that uh, you know, using this methodology, Shortel guarantees that it will have the lowest TCO, and uh, if a customer yeah. is able to use you know, credible third-party data to prove that that's not true, they will get the system for free. And so, yeah, that was a guarantee yeah. that stood in place for five years. So. It was a it was an all encompassing approach from as you you know as you asked there, I mentioned Nancy from training to enablement to the certification to the TCA guarantee to just continue you know, a, a, an approach or a model of continuous improvement that I frankly have to say the Alinean team did an outstanding job of just being there being with us continuing to develop helping to provide and find uh, additional or better third party independent data to map into the tool. It was a it was a it was a, yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to note that Elenian is not just a solution, it's a service also that right. you know, is, is, is packaged with it. So I'll talk today probably more about that. But, you know, the, the credibility that you brought about as a result of offering that guarantee is, is pretty amazing. And I think that's one of the issues sometimes with TCO or ROI tools is just the level of skepticism that you know, uh, someone who's viewing it or interacting with the tool doesn't really know or can't see what's behind the numbers or right. doesn't have confidence and is skeptical. So how, how did you, I mean, I suppose the guarantee, I don't know, everyone, every company yes. can do that, but uh, I mean, the guarantee yes. would kind of take care of that. But did you get a right. lot of questions about what's behind the numbers and oh, how most you certainly, have yeah. Transparency yeah. And, and no, most certainly. And so this is back. We're going to talk about you know sort of the storytelling of the value storytelling in a second. And this was, you know, it was very very important that we wrap you know the overall you know, economic results into you know the solution selling methods and the overall story that we're able to paint for you know for the customer the impact that it was going to have on their business. In the tool itself, Alinean helped us a ton uh, in terms of being able to break down the methodology, being able to show all of the steps within the tool for the customer. I think I mentioned earlier the you know each customer was able to go into the tool. They could see the assumptions. They could modify the assumptions. They if they just couldn't get happy with a particular cost line item, and there were 14 separate cost line items from capital cost to maintenance to software assurance to electricity consumption to system management to moves, ads, and changes. I mean it was it was complete and it was robust. But in every case, you know what the Alinean platform enables the each com customer and a partner or a sales rep working with the customer to be able to inspect that assumption, to be able to uh, see what the, you know, the source of the data, see how it was being used, modify that assumption. And, it, and the end result is, is exactly what you need, is the decision maker could stand up in front of their peers and say, you know, Alinean and Shortel had a great tool, but these numbers are mine. I own these numbers. I'm willing to live or die by the results of these numbers. And in fact, the, the numbers so so granular and so credible that many customers would come back and compare their actual results ex post with the original plan. So, I mean, that's the nirvana when it comes to financial business cases and business modeling for these types of decisions, I believe. Yeah, so true. At the beginning, you talked about TCO and ROI and sure. your short tell, you know, use cases, primarily it yeah. sounds on the TCO front. Did you, right. you, well, you didn't really need it for ROI because these customers already had bought off on the idea that they needed something. So now it was just a matter of comparing the total costs of one solution right. over another. Um, did you ever have a need to make use of ROI? And maybe you can just kind of remind folks what the difference is. 
Yeah, it's it's a, you know the way that these tools are used, you know, the IT industry especially. ROI is more around proving out the general value of a shift in technology. So uh, you know there is there are uh, you know provable sort of general economic metrics around moving from older an older analog system to a modern voice over IP system. Many of our customers had already made that decision, but they were very discreetly comparing Cisco and Avaya and Shortel and others. So it was down to a you know, very specific line by line cost comparison between between those two vendors. It's like, you know, you've made a decision to to buy a, a motor vehicle over a bicycle, that's an ROI decision. But now you're comparing a BMW with a Honda or some other make, uh, that's that's gonna get down to a TCO decision. So in the in the voice over IP world, the imperative is very much around voice over IP. As you know, in the video world, which I've spent the last three years in, a very different industry but still within unified communications. It's actually the other way around. Um, there are, you know, there's about a five to seven percent penetration of video into boardrooms and huddle rooms around the world, and so it's 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 much more important to be able to help a customer prove, you know, working with them as a trusted advisor to prove the general economic benefit of that technology at the front end of the process. Uh, I think, you know, one of the great statistics that, that Tom Pacello talks to is, uh, you know, sixty percent of IT's, IT IT uh, decisions are lost to no decision. You know, it was our job to help secure the priority of the project early on. And once we'd done that, we knew, you know, winning the TCO argument at the back end of the process was, was much, much easier. So in video, the imperative is much more around ROI. And we've used that uh, increasingly uh, at Starleaf. In fact, all of our uh, government uh, grants have been based, uh, grant approvals have been based, every single one based on a very discreet uh, ROI you know, modeling and, and set of results for each individual customer. And uh, we're in the process of developing a very similar approach in terms of the you know the underlying capabilities that we had at Shortel. Um, you know, in terms of uh, having an ROI methodology that is is exactly configurable to each customer circumstances, is based as best we can develop and find work with on independent third-party data, and then is is completely transparent in terms of the customer's ability to go in and inspect the assumptions, modify those, accept them or zero them out if they can't get comfortable. So we're taking the same approach. In the video world with Starleaf, but um, but it's you know uh, right down the middle of the, sort of the ROI track versus TCO. So that has mm -hmm. helped there, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much. Yep. So when you talk numbers, because you know numbers don't yes. really have much of an uh, emotional impact, and I right. think when you're really getting someone excited about something and and really um, emotionally invested in it and wanting to do something you know it's hard to do through numbers so when you're quantifying right. either TCO or ROI you're not just you know tell us how how you weave more than just raw numbers into the story yes it, it's yeah the, the, the raw numbers can get, get a little boring so what we one of the things is you know the storytelling here is so important but also sort of the graphical illustration of the numbers and then the weaving of those into the story. So one of the things I would often do with a, with a, if I was reading a more skeptical decision maker is I would take the competitor's capital cost to zero. You know, the, and just say, look, let's just assume that Cisco gives you this $16 million of equipment for free. You mean, here we can mm -hmm. still demonstrate that the economic impact to you as an organization is going to be twice as much. You get their cost is still going to be twice as much even if they give the, the, the equipment away for free. So why would you make a decision based on price? Um, you really need to make a decision based on all of the activity. Well, you know, once you fire this missile, there's going to be a result. And the result is you know, very, very heavy burden for you in terms of teams. You know, let me talk to you about this other customer, uh, you know, this healthcare customer or you know, the, the very large or this bank where they merged you know, two organizations, the size of the team they needed to manage and the complexity that they had and the results of that complexity. So, so being able to tell the story in terms of what we'd experienced with other customers and, and how that related to the, the cost or the economic impact was, was, was very, very important. And that came really with experience. That came with experience with you know, the sales folks and the partners. They just got you know, more and more adept at, at talking to the financial story, but being able to put that in the context of that specific customer's you know, their, their exact issues and problems and needs and how they're related to other, other customers uh, of the like. Okay. That was, that was okay. a really interesting way to look at it. 
I that got my attention when he said, let's just take the cop capital cost of the competitor to zero, and we can still show you that uh, you know we're a better way to go. That that right. brings in the emotional aspect. And people then really, I think, want to listen more. So it's very impactful. Right. Well, at this point, I think it's probably it's 20 after, and so it's probably a good time now to just see what this looks like. And so I'll ask Dave to jump on. And Mark, I know that you, um, you you're traveling at the moment, and so you took some time out. And I'm going to excuse you from the call because I know you've got to get back to uh, your trip here. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was really interesting and helpful. Oh, that's my pleasure, Nancy. I really appreciate the time, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, thank you, Nancy. Um, and okay. I'll uh, be in touch soon. Okay, sounds good, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, Dave. Let's. Um, that that was interesting. First of all, before we jump in, is there anything that Dave, uh, that Mark had said that you want to expound on, or uh, you want to just jump into what you're going to show us? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, having me on uh, today's uh, webinar. It was really uh, a wonderful uh, series that you have. I'm glad to be here and representing Alinea. And I think Mark made a lot of really great points and has a really great use case. And I, I agree with you. That last example he gave of uh, being able to show someone and uh, you know taking a cost, uh, the competitor's cost to zero, and still been able to prove that they have a better total cost of ownership is really, really powerful and definitely is an attention getter. And I think that's, you know, I think one of the takeaways is if for folks uh, on the, the webinar today are interested in uh, being able to communicate value better, it's little pieces like that that really can make a huge difference and differentiate yourself from your competition uh, just in the way you tell your story, uh, improve your value to folks. Because I think there's a lot of, uh, cynical buyers out there and you know that idea of having proof of having third party validate, validation or, or really, is really important. Yeah. Um, I think you know, that's what TCO is really all about, isn't it? It's it's about showing that it's not just price and so often uh, that's the only thing prospects really, I mean certainly sophisticated procurement people and maybe IT people who are doing a lot of purchasing, they know a little bit more and are more sophisticated, but in your everyday B2B kind of environment, a lot of people just think about price, comparing price, because they don't know what other things, factors go into it or what other questions to ask. And I think that's really what you're all about is helping to tell more than just a price story. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, you know, as uh, consumers, whether they be the B2B consumers, uh, procurement, uh, or, or just general consumers out there are much more educated and do a lot of research up front. And so uh, one other benefit of a you know, set of value uh, story tools is to be able to do some re-education if they have some wrong assumptions about things. And so it, you sometimes have to walk people backwards from some of the assumptions that maybe they had about your product or, or the market or what, uh, what all the elements of TCO are uh, before they can adequately make a decision for purchasing. So I think that's another uh, a good factor. One last thing I'll say about uh, Mark's experience, uh, you probably got a flavor for it when he talked about some of the training and education in that uh, TCO guarantee program. One of the things that uh, you know, we've definitely seen at Alinea and when we look at companies that have been very successful with a value story uh, set of tools you know, is that they wrap it with a full program. So it's not just about having some really nifty tools that you can put out there either on your website or salespeople can carry around and engage with customers. That's really critical, that's the foundation, but it's how you wrap that around with, with training of Mark mentioned certification, how you incentivize the sales force to really understand how to tell the story uh, and make sure that they have, uh, you know, in context, can be very credible in front of customers. Um, that's, that's a real huge part of it. In fact, that's um, the part of the business at Alinea that I'm responsible for is uh, the customer success of helping our customers get the most value out of the tools uh, that they have with an overall value selling program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so important. A lot of SaaS type products just they they don't you know the you sign up, you subscribe. I mean, that's the part of the that whole model is that it's e supposedly easy and you just get started and and then you go. But I would consider Linian more software with a service. 
because that you are experts at help training and helping people think through what the story and the messaging should be and training people to be able to convey that. Yeah, absolutely, and that's it's really critical that uh, it's not just a uh, pass the tool over to the customer and, and uh, you know forget about it. it it's a, a full full blown program. So uh, okay. uh, with that, I, what I thought I would do, uh, Nancy, is uh, for folks that maybe haven't really seen one of these uh, cloud based uh, interactive value tools uh, before, uh, to to run through a quick example. This is uh, you know Mark. Uh, we talked about the short tell example. What I thought I'd show today is one that we recently did for Dell, uh, and it's publicly available. This is one that's what we would call a marketing tool. It's out on their website, and it's really aimed at being a TCO calculator for current Dell customers uh, to get them to understand uh, the advantages of uh, the, their PS series uh, for for storage needs. Uh, so I'm not a big, you know, IT professional, technical person, so. I can show you how uh, how the tool works in general. And like Mark said, uh, Alinean creates these as custom tools uh, for each of our customers based on their needs. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, as I would if I was uh, a person on their website, just wanting to get some uh, a bit of education and some business uh, advice, uh, an assessment of what I need or what I should do. I can go in here. This is also something that a salesperson can definitely take a customer through. Uh, so I've already uh, so gone this in. One, and, this is, and, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but this is also then, yeah. it, it, it's a lead gen tool as well, right? Because you can't, aren't you, yeah, you're capturing their contact information, or I suppose you don't have to, but why not? And that's, very, that's a, really, it's a really good point. So each of our customers does it a little bit differently. So a tool like this that is publicly available, it's promoted on, on their website, uh, it's searchable on Google, uh, can definitely be used uh, for lead generation. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you that how that happens kind of in the, as we progress through the, the, this actually fairly simple tool. I, but each of our customers wants to do it a different way. Some of them don't care about lead capture. It's just as a, uh, as a tool that customers can use off their web, website or working with a partner or a salesperson. Others specifically want it uh, as a way to capture uh, leads uh, and they do that a number of different ways, so we can kind of go through that as we move through the tool. Okay. Like Mark said, uh, all of our tools uh, allow for personalization, and, and the idea is that as you capture whether, in this case, I've already put in my organization name, business location can be important based on currency. Obviously, we want to serve up business, uh, a business assessment in your local currency, and also based on the industry, so I've already chose one. In this case, uh, Dell wants to, to really focus, have the customer focus on what's important to them. So in this case, um, given some choices, I'm going to decide to add a new work list. Uh, so that tells a little bit about the organization. Based on that, uh, and this is something, again, that's custom by each customer we work with, uh, we make some assumptions based on that data and have some preset baseline uh, guesses that we can plug into their profile. So for this, uh, in this particular case, it's, you know, some guesses on you know how many terabytes of uh, storage are being added or replaced and the kind of growth rate, but I can always change this and make this anything I want it to be uh, throughout the process. So it's very easy to change and I can come back as either a customer or a salesperson person and do that. And then there's some other, again, some other choices on, okay, what kind of, in this case, what kind of drives do I want? So I may, uh, let's say I'll keep it at hybrid. Uh, and so based on this, this basic profile, uh, the next step is just to get a general uh, business assumption, let it do its work here. Uh, and it, in this case, it makes a product recommendation for me based on what I've entered, uh, a particular, uh, particular product that Dell offers, and gives me some comparisons from a TCO perspective, uh, the, the total cost of ownership from a Dell perspective, and then some comparisons uh, from a market perspective. Now, one of the things that you asked Mark, and Mark made a real good point on, is that in this environment, it, you know, people really want that third-party uh, validation of data uh, and be able to understand that, that the numbers there are as accurate as they can be. Uh, for Alinean Tools, we have partnerships with a lot of different third-party uh, organizations that can uh, either uh, provide us the data or can validate the data. IDC would be one of them. 
Uh, so again, depending on the what we're trying to uh, put into a tool uh, would depend on where we get that third-party validation from. Um, so you can see in this particular example, there's some general uh, cost line items uh, that compare the Dell uh, with the market. If I want the details, I can just simply click on those, uh, and again, I can get some uh, particular uh, breakdowns. Uh, I can look at how it uh, goes over a number of years. And again here, from a sales perspective, let's say, uh, I can even put in, a, let's say, a discount uh, to show how that impacts. And there's the, the, the Mark, Mark's example, you know, uh, you know, could be, and it wouldn't work in this case, but to be able to put 100% discount for the competition to kind of show uh, what the differences would be. So each, this again gives a lot of detail, and again, I can, I can change the uh, period of analysis. It's set to three, now it's at five, and you can see uh, the numbers change and give me uh, what my projected uh, annual and overall TCO savings are. And again, I can go in under any of these line items and I can change the underlying assumptions uh, to better fit my specific situation as a customer. Uh, and, and again, like Mark had, had mentioned, this allows me as a customer to really own these numbers and feel confident that the, what I'm seeing in the results uh, is an accurate reflection of the business and the value that uh, a change to this particular product could bring. Okay. Now, one of the other features that we, we put in, uh, you know, a lot of our customers put in these tools, and it's a fairly straightforward tool here, is based on their recommendation, it, it's obviously recommending a, a specific product. Uh, there can be educational opportunities for that product line that I can click around and I can get some, uh, some nuggets of information if I'm not familiar with the suggestion, uh, some of the benefits of the different feature sets, and why they're important. So again, that's something that we, we work with uh, the, the customers to develop. Um, and then based on that, uh, this is now when we, you mentioned, uh, can this be used for lead generation? This is one of the ways that a tool like this uh, can be used for lead generation when it's publicly out there on the uh, report. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that this custom information is something that you can bring back as a customer, you can further analyze, you can share with other folks within the organization, maybe whoever's part of the uh, procurement or the purchasing decision, uh, often a, a committee of folks. Uh, so I can put in my, in, uh, you can put your information in and have it uh, email you the uh, personalized report that has all of the recommendations in it. And there's also links then to go off, uh, again, uh, to have maybe some additional white papers, go out to the website, uh, do some other explorations into various parts, in the case of Dell's website. Uh, when the report comes, uh, so I already created one earlier, this is an example of having a, a personalized report based on the information that you're putting into the tool. Uh, so as I uh, quickly scroll through it, you'll notice that it's you know, bringing in the name of my organization, it's putting in the assumptions around, the, you know, I wanted to add a new workload and the, the capacity and growth uh, numbers that I put in, uh, and then basically summarizing everything else that I saw in the online version of the tool specific to uh, the information I provided. Uh, so the profile, uh, the recommended solution, and then it expands on all of the different features and benefits of the recommended solution. And I'll scroll through and see there's a lot here. Uh, but then to the specific value advantages. So where we saw that online, now here's a breakdown of the PCO, again with the market compare, some nice graphs, uh, and then breakdowns page by page of all those details, from hardware and software in this case, uh, the, the power and cooling, again, all of these things I could go back in and I could make adjustments if need be and, and reissue the report. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, again, an example of the type of work that we do with our customers. This is a fairly straightforward report, or, or tool, I should say. Uh, some of them are much more complicated. Uh, Mark mentioned they have like 14 lines of, or, or different types of the economic assumptions that could be made. So we see a whole variety, but uh, this is, a, I think, a pretty representative a, a example of the look and feel uh, for one of our TCO tools. You know, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about customer experience, and we hear so much about that more and more lately. And I think what this is doing for Dell and others that use this kind of tool, if I'm a customer, I'm thinking to myself, wow, they're making it easy for me. So this company must be easier to work with. Or uh, 
I'm at least in the back of my mind, I'm I'm realizing, hey, I, I can't I didn't get this from the other company I was looking at. So right away this tells me what it might be like to work with Dell in this example because they're providing these sorts of tools. Yeah, I, yeah, I absolutely I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at you know just some of the examples that we have with our customer base. One of the things that we're seeing, Nancy, is the how important the user experience is on getting folks to get through, uh, use the tool, and get that impact that they want. And also from a uh, from our customer perspective, in this case, Dell, uh, to get that lead generated that they tell us uh, there's a compelling enough story there. It's easy enough mm -hmm. to get your data, or if you don't have some of that data available. Uh, because we're presetting some of the data, making assumptions, you can play with that data and you end up getting something of value and then hopefully from a Dell perspective, because you're putting in the information, they're collecting some lead data to follow up on uh, and be able to understand the type of uh, uh, economic assumptions that their potential buyer is All making right. uh, with this particular product. So it's a very, you know, it, it's really interesting. But, you know, if you don't have that good experience, if this wasn't really easy to fill out, if it wasn't a good educational perspective, as a, uh, uh, you know, an end customer on their site, I may not even make it all the way through. I may just give up halfway. Uh, this is too complex. I don't understand. Uh, so that user experience is really critical. You can have a great, uh, a great tool from a technical perspective, but if it's not easy, if it's not uh, the way we expect a lot of our apps like to work on our phone, if it's not that simple, people may just give up and not even use it. True. Okay, so you brought up a point which is that in addition to customer experience, it's also the company, in this case Dell, can gather a lot of really good information about what people are looking for and what they're, you know, that they can do some analytics on. I hadn't really thought about that. Do you have any kind of research that points to how far along people are in the buying process, the ones that typically use these tools. Because I'm wondering if if I'm earlier on in the process, maybe I'm not so inclined to use a tool like this, but if I'm further down, I might be, and therefore there's some lead scoring uh, functionality that can be applied to this as well. Yeah, you know, I, I think it varies, Nancy. I think typically a tool like this is used fairly early on in, in the sales process. Uh, you know, from a data collection perspective, obviously if I uh, am uh, I'm going out to the website and I go through this process, I'm definitely a, uh, should be a qualified lead to be able to follow up with uh, because mm -hmm. I've gone through and actually printed the report and you can see the assumptions that I've made. Uh, from a sales perspective, it can also be, uh, a tool like this can be used uh, early on uh, to, to qual further qualify or have an initial value discussion uh, to collect data, let's say in a, like a discovery type of conversation uh, from a customer. Uh, in, in another thing, in another way, a tool like this, and I think Mark mentioned a, it a little bit, um, and what we're seeing more and more in the SaaS world is to be able to also use a tool like this to go back and validate uh, did, were your initial assumptions before you purchase that you put in here um, what your TCO would look like let's say 12 months, two years later, in fact, did in fact, when you get the real numbers, did you achieve those, uh, those goals? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're seeing a, a shift into a lot of value realization use cases for tools like this that allow uh, like a sales team or a customer success team, if you're in the SaaS world, to be able to uh, plug numbers in over time and track the success or maybe not as much success as hoped for with customers and be able to offer solutions throughout the life cycle of the product, uh, you know, before a, a renewal or uh, before rolling out a new product set or uh, mm -hmm. trying to head off the competition. As it were. So I think there's a lot of ways that these types of tools can be used to help throughout the life cycle of not just the buyer's journey initially, but also through the renewal cycle. Makes sense. I want to remind everyone that if you have questions, go ahead and type them into the side panel and uh, I'll, if we have time I'll uh, for sure ask them and if not someone can answer them offline. Um, all right so d was there um, a different something else you wanted to show? I have some questions but I, I don't want to stop your flow. 
No, I, I think we've uh, made it to uh, the end of the, the demo portion. So okay. So one of the questions that I have, if, if I'm sitting in, in the audience, I'm listening to this, it's sounding pretty interesting and I can see how specifically in certain types of sales or in certain types of products, tools like this would be really, really critical. My question to myself would be, gosh, how you know, is it possible to actually pull off? You know, I mean, how much time is involved? Do how much how much resources is involved? What's the typical engagement look like? How do people start, and then what's the flow? You know, typically, just from an overall timeline perspective, uh, our typical engagement from the time a we kick off uh, the development of a tool to the time it's launched and put into production is a, typically like eight to ten week time frame. Uh, the variables there really depend on how far you are along in your value messaging. One of the services mm -hmm. that Alinean uh, offers is, is not just, it's not just about building out a tool, but it's also helping develop a value, value messaging and value matrix, having workshops to work with uh, your full team, uh, your marketing, sales, uh, what have you, uh, to be able to not just again, have a tool, but really wrap a, a coherent uh, strategy and messaging around it. So depending on how far you are in that process, that might make some uh, you know, differences on uh, the overall timeline, but generally it's a fairly quick uh, uh, project, again, eight to ten weeks from, from kickoff to having a tool out there in production. And who are the key constituents that you would need to have involved or that if they're involved, the, the the likelihood of success is a lot higher because I know a lot of organizations, you know, you've got marketing on in one uh, you know, silo and you've got sales in another. Is it imperative that they're working together? What's it look like? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think what we see a lot is, uh, for, you know, certainly product marketing has a huge uh, say in, in in these tools. And that's a key uh, set of stakeholders that have to be able to drive the content or help drive the content. Uh, you know, certainly, depending on what the tool is going to be used for in, in the audience. So, if it's going to be used as, uh, you know, we have a lot of tools that are dual, dual purpose. So, they're uh, public facing out on the web and therefore a real important marketing resources, but also used with the internal sales force. It could be even different versions of it. So, I think the sales team is going to be involved, and certainly you'd want sales input uh, through the design phase. And also with the usability piece, you know, we mentioned the importance of user experience. Um, you may not be able to get uh, in customers to really be part of a development process and understand how the interface works and is easy, is it self-explanatory, but certainly that's something that salespeople can help with. Uh, and so we definitely see that's a, a real key part of it. Uh, and that's one of the things that Alinium brings to the table is the methodology to, uh, to, to get the right people in the room to make decisions in a timely manner to be able to, to put one of these tools and an overall program around it uh, together. Mm -hmm. And is there a typical type of company that benefits the most from these types of tools? How would I know, for instance, if I, my company, you know, if it would be value, right? So we're kind of talking about the ROI aspect here. Who, who, who gets the highest ROI from your tool? Well, I think there's two ways to look at it. One, if we look at our customer base, it's primarily in you know high tech IT uh, types of applications. We certainly get a lot uh, of traction there. I think in general, though, it's any any companies that are struggling uh, in their market uh, to be able to communicate their value and make that connection uh, improve uh, through telling a value story that their solution will work for their customers. Uh, so that could be anything from high tech. It could be uh, in uh, finance. It could be in uh, you know any space uh, where there's that struggle. Uh, certainly, a lot of the the value that we put into these tools is is around uh, the numbers, the total cost of ownership, the ROI. Those are really important parts of any type of, of procurement or any kind of buying process. So anything, uh, any applications around there, we can certainly. Uh, or value tools themselves and value selling program uh, can be very beneficial. Makes sense. And you know what? We're right at the uh, 11.45 mark here, so this is a, a good time to wrap up. Um, I see any questions, and since we are at the 
the time limit here. Let's go ahead and sign off. But I just want to say thank you so much for sharing with our audience the importance of being able to communicate value and the way to do it right and, and what your solution does. It was really helpful. Oh, my pleasure. And, and again, uh, if anyone uh, you know on the call wants to learn more, or just has uh, you know some questions about our approach to value selling and value selling programs in general, feel free to contact me, and I'd be love to talk to uh, the audience out there. That sounds good. And everyone will be receiving an email afterward with a link to this recording. So if you want to listen to parts of it again or share it with a colleague, you'll be able to do that. And again. Uh, uh, I'll be at CEB next week in Vegas, so if any of you are attending that Sales and Marketing Summit next week, uh, reach out to me and let me know and we can get a chance to meet in person. And We will be having a webinar next week as well, so I'll be calling in from Vegas next Thursday at 11 and if you haven't signed up for that webinar yet, um, feel free to go ahead and get, go to our website and sign up for that or our series in general. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thanks again, Dave. Thanks. Bye-bye.